Welcome viewers, now we start a discussion on this topic that is affinity of echinoderms with corals. This topic is very attractive and interesting to the geologists because, because they are always trying to establish a relation between echinoderms which are non-corals and corals. This uh, topic is very important for the students of undergraduate and postgraduate level. Firstly, uh, you have to know that who are echinoderms. Echinoderms are most highly developed non chordates Echinoderms are most highly developed non chordates The adult echinoderms having the pentamerous symmetry and their body is covered with soft or hard spines. So the name Echinos means spine-like structure, darns, money, their uh, body is being covered with the soft and soft or hard spine-like structures. Now, who are chordates? Chordates they have notochord. Actually, uh, the chordates firstly want to tell that these are chordates. These are chordates. But this chordate group we can differentiate into two compartments. One compartment, compartment one, and this is compartment two. This compartment includes the animals of which are called protocordates. Because they have the typical notochord throughout any stage of their life cycle. Now, compartment 2, this compartment includes vertebrates the vertebrates evolve from protocordates because when in protocordates the notochord converted to or changed to vertebral column then the vertebrates group evolved so now i want to show the similarities between the adult echinoderms and chordates the first one is mesodermal skeletal substance. Mesodermal skeletal substance. This mesodermal skeletal substance found in both echinoderms and chordates. So I am telling it from the uh, similarities aspect uh, from the similarities point of view so what is mesoderm you know that mesoderm there are three germinal layers there are three germinal layers one is ectoderm mesoderm second one mesoderm and the third one is endoderm you know that the muscles are formed from mesoderm and in this case, this mesodermal cells help to form a, a skeletal like structure that is a hardy structure and it is called the skeletal substance. So this mesodermal skeletal substance is found in both echinoderms and cordates. Next, point of similarity is Next point of similarity is the, we can say, the perforations, the perforations in calyx. You know that in echinoderms, particularly the uh, crinoidean group, that is the antedon or sea lily, they have calyx, which is a uh, important uh, diagnostic feature, calyx. And this calyx is look like this and some perforations present on this, some perforations present on this calyx. And this perforation in this calyx can be compared. Now you, you can find this calyx also in some extinct echinoderms, that is carpoid echinoderms, they are called homologuans. So in these homologuans, the calyx with perforations present and this can 
also be compared to the pharyngeal gill slits. This can be compared to the pharyngeal gill slits. Pharyngeal pharyngeal gill slits in Ampioxus. You know what is Ampioxus? Ampioxus is an animal included under subphylum cephalochordata. It is a protocordate. It is an animal of protocordate group. So the perforations of calyx in uh, carpoidicarodom that is extinct homologians can be compared with the pharyngeal gill slits in Ampioxus. Next similarity is creatine phosphate and also arginine phosphate. These two biochemical compounds is found in muscles and this is the source of energy for muscular con contraction. And this creatine phosphate and arginine phosphate, according to Needham, according to Needham, Needham 1932, according to Needham, this creatine phosphate and arginine phosphate is found in both echinoderms and cordates. Next. Similarity is according to Wilhelmar nineteen forty two. Wilhelmar nineteen forty two. He showed uh, there is there lies similarities between the serological aspects in both echinoderms and cordates. What is serology? Serology is nothing but the uh, simple blood test. That is, with this serological test, uh, it helps in the diagnostic identification of antibody in uh, blood serum or uh, body fluid uh, of animal. So, Wilhelmer found the serological similarities between the echinoderms and cordates. Next one is deuterostome. Both echinoderms and cordates are deuterostomes. Deuterostome means the blastopore. This is blastopore. This blastopore changes to or converts to anus. So these animals are called deuterostome animals. Both of, in both echinoderms and cordates, this, during the embryonic development, this blastopore changes to or converts to ants. Then, similarity, another similarity is holoblastic holoblastic and holoblastic and radial cleavage. What is cleavage? You know that it is a sperm and it is an ovum. The haploid gamete. This is the haploid gamete of male and this is the haploid gamete of female. And these two gametes unite or fuse together to form a zygote that is 2N. This is zygote. And then this zygote undergoes mitotic cell division. Undergoes mitotic, undergoes mitotic cell division to form numerous cells, many cells, multi cells. And when during the first mitotic division or first cleavage, when the cleavage furrow 
runs through this diameter, runs along this diameter of this gigantic circle, then it is called holoblastic plumage. And after some mitotic divisions is being completed, then some blastomeres, then some cells or blastomeres are produced. And when these blastomeres are arranged like this, the blastomeres are arranged like this. This is one layer of blastomere and this is another layer of blastomere. This is upper tier and this is lower tier. And the upper tier lies over the lower tier in such a pattern that looks like a radial symmetry around the pole to pole axis, pole to pole. This is one pole, this is another pole, pole to pole axis. So these are the uh, different similarities we can find in both uh, echinoderms and cords. Now, rather than these similarities between the adult echinoderms and cordates, there are also some larval similarities which are very notable and Mejnikov, the famous scientist Mejnikov eighteen sixty nine Mejnikov he tried to show the similarities between the larval forms of echinoderms and larval forms of cords. So now we have to know that what are the larval forms of echinoderms. The larval forms of echinoderms, it has echinoderms, has two types of larvae, many types of larvae it has, but I mentioned here two types of larvae, important larvae. One is bipinaria and another one is ori Cularia, bipinaria and auricularia. The bipinaria larva looks like this. This is bipinaria larva. And auricularia larva looks like this. auricularia larva looks like this. Both these larva have one mouth here. This is mouth. This is the digestive tract and here is the anus. Mouth. DT digestive tract and anus. Here is also mouth digestive tract and now, the larval form of cord, that is the uh, larval form of uh, tornaria, uh, we call it uh, larval form that is tornaria. This is the larval form of uh, balanoglossus, tornaria larva, cord. The cordate. The cordate means hemicordate. Cordate means hemicordate. This hemicordate, as for example, balanoglossus. This hemicordate larval form looks like this. looks like this. Here is the mouth. 
this is the stomach intestine that is the digestive tract and this is anus mouth digestive tract and anus so mesnikov found the similarities between the larval forms that is bipinary auriculated to pycnoderms and the ternary of uh, cordate what are the similarities the first one is the first one is the similarities between the similarities of uh, symmetry means both have the uh, bilateral symmetry because the larval forms this is this is the larval forms and in all cases uh, you can find if you draw a line like this uh, axis like this then this would be the mirror image of this part this would be the mirror image of this part this would be the mirror image of this part so in all cases we are finding the bilateral symmetry and these larvae are the free living forms this is the first point of similarity the second point of similarity is both all the larvae that is the larvae of echinoderm these are the larvae of echinoderms this is the larvae of cordate that is semicordate all these larvae are transparent then another point which we can find also in adult and also in this larval form that is very important point that is the cyzocelic rather we can say it at first the actual mode of xylem formation is enterocelic xylem enterocelic xylem there are two types of xylem number one is cyzocelic xylem and another one is enterocelic xylem and uh, this enterocelic xylem uh, this mode um, enterocele is uh, found in both uh, echinoderms and uh, cords this enterocelic xylem uh, uh, you can find in uh, larva of echinoderm and cords and also adults of echinoderms and cords what is enterocelic xylem enterocelic xylem xylem is a body cavity when the body cavity forms for, from a pouch that is pinched off from digestive tract or enteron that is called enterocelic xylem another one is another xylem is cyzocelic cyzocelic what is cyzocelic xylem cyzocelic xylem where the xylem forms by the splitting of mesodermal cells that is called the cyzocelic xylem anyway in this case we can find the enterocelic type of xylem in both echinoderms and uh, cordates in adult and also in larval forms then the disposition of this xylem <clears throat> is similar in the larvae of echinoderm and also in the larvae of tornaria the location of the mouth the location of mouth digestive tract and anus mouth digestive tract anus mouth digestive tract, the mouth digestive tract the location of this that is uh, the first one the anterior part the anterior towards the anterior and mouth is present and towards the posterior and anus is present and in between this mouth and anus the digestive tract is located so the similar location of mouth digestive tract and anus is found in all this type of larvae that is the larvae of echinoderms and also in the larvae of cordate rather hemicordate that is tornaria larva this is tornaria larva tornaria larva one important thing that is the ciliated bands ciliated bands ciliated bands the ciliated bands in larva we may find the ciliated band like this we may find the ciliated band like this this is the ciliated band this is one ciliated band and this is another ciliated band it may be uh, here that is ciliated band the ciliated band may be here the ciliated band also may be here in this case 
the ciliated band would be like this that is and one is this ciliated band this is a band like structure made up of a uh, cilia and in this case uh, another band is also present and that band is this in between these two bands so these ciliated bands are called troc t r o c h troc when the band is anterior to the mouth it is called prototroc prototroc and or it can be called as pre oral ciliary band pre pre oral oral that is the mouth pre oral ciliary band and when this ciliated band is posterior in its location towards the anus it is called telotroc telotroc or post oral ciliated band this is prototroc this is telotroc the similar pattern of bands are found here and here also this is this band this is prototroc and this is telotroc this is telotroc and in between this prototroc and telotroc one extra band you can find here that is the metatroc that is it is present in between the prototroc and telotroc so it is called metatroc so you find the similarities of the uh, pattern of the uh, ciliary bands in these larval forms now another similarity we find that the madreporic vesicle madreporic vesicle it can be compared it can be compared to the hard vesicle hard vesicle of balanoglossus hard vesicle of balanoglossus larvae that is the uh, turn so what is madreporic vesicle you know that madreporite is a calcareous plate which is present on the aboral surface aboral sur surface means there are two surfaces suppose uh, this is an echinoderm uh, the, the mouth is present on this surface so this is oral surface and this surface is called aboral surface so when madreporite the perforated calcareous plate so this madreporite is present and during in uh, the, its uh, larval condition this madreporite uh, continues its development in a vesicle that vesicle here this is the vesicle this is the vesicle and within the vesicle there are madreporite is being formed and this vesicle is called madreporic vesicle this madreporic vesicle of the echinoderms larvae can be compared with the hard vesicle of uh hemicords that is hard vesicle uh, the vesicle within which the vesicle within which heart is present within which heart is present that is called the hard vesicle so these are the different similarities we find in both adults and larval forms of echinoderms and cord these are the main similarities we find now uh I uh, I am giving some emphasis on the uh, discussion or the comments given by the different scientists. One group of scientists, they come to the conclusion uh, after evaluating this discussion or this analysis that the uh, echinoderms should be the or they are regarded to be the nearest group to be the nearest group to cords. again other group of scientists including a famous scientist that is bader 1900 other group of scientists including bader including bader 
1900, they told that the both echinoderms and chordates they diverged after their origin from a common ancestor. That is, they have a common ancestor, and from this common ancestor, they are diverged into two different lines. One line is for mechanoderms, another line is for chordates. So now I want to draw a phylogeny by which uh, all can clearly understand the how the chordates and echinoderms evolved and how closed they are. Now I draw the phylogeny. First, bilateria. This is a group, bilateria. This group of animals having the bilateral symmetry. From this evolved primitive acela. Primitive acela. That is, they have no coelom. They are the primitive type of animal originating from originated from bilateria. They are primitive acela. This primitive acela gave rise to three groups like this. Three groups. One is Asilomata. Next, Pseudosilomata. Then, Eusilomata. Asilomata, this group having no silom. Ah, means absent. Pseudosilomata, this group having silom, but that is not true silom, the false silom. And you silomita this group having the true silom. That is the true body cavity is lined by mesoderm. And from this you silomata, two line diverged. One is one is enterocilla. Enterocilla and another one is Sizocilla. This is a type of coelom. I already discussed about it. Enterocilla and Sizocilla. From this Enterocilla, three group originated. From Enterocilla, three group originated. Three group originated. One is Brachiopoda. Brachiopoda, Dipleurula, and Ketognatha. This is very important group. That is Dipleurula. This is a hypothetical larval forms of echinoderms look like this. The hypothetical larval forms of echinoderms look like this. Here is the tuft of apical tuft. And here is the mouth. Here is the mouth. And this is the digestive tract. That is the stomach. And this is intestine. And here is the anus. So this is Dipleurula larva. And from this Dipleurula larva evolved three lines. Number one is Echinodermata. Number two is Chordata. And number three is Hemichordata. So, we can find here that all these three groups having a common ancestry, having a common ancestor, that is the Dipleurula larva. And this Dipleurula larva give rise to Echinoderm, Chordates and Hemichordates. 
So we can say that the echinoderms to be the closest or nearest to the hemichordates or chordates group. Hemichordates is nothing but the most primitive type of chordates. So lastly we can finally assign that echinoderms having much, uh, much closer affinity to the chordates rather hemichordates. Lastly so this is this is what uh, what I have drawn. It is called the phylogeny of echinoderms and chordates. Lastly, one important thing I want to know that one in case of adult echinoderms and chordates. In case of adult adult echinoderms and chordates, uh, we can find one important character. It also shows it also shows the significant similarities. That is the infra infra epidermal nervous system. The infra epidermal nervous system means the nervous system is formed just below the epidermis in both echinoderm, adult echinoderm, and also chordate, mainly hemichordate or balanoglossus. So all these similarities can strongly show that the echinoderms uh, having the uh, uh, closer affinities uh, to the chordates or they are regarded to be the nearest to uh, chordates. So otherwise we can conclude that the chordates originated from most highly developed non-chordate echinoderms. I repeat, chordates originated from, that is, ori it's evolved or originated. Chordates evolved or originated from echinoderms which are most highly developed non-chordates. So I hope that this topic is now quite clear to you and you wait for our next session for which the notification will be sent to you. So thank you.